Welcome to Men, Sex, and Tantra. Discover where your parents, porn, and religion never taught you about being a man and having extraordinary sex. Get ready to have your mind blown and your world rocked. All right, gentlemen and ladies who listen to this show, it is Men, Sex, and Tantra. We are still pulling back the curtain on what women are really thinking and feeling about dating men, sex, love, anything they want to talk about, all based on a Facebook post <laughs> that I said, hey, ladies, you want to come talk to me? And uh, it's been uh, enlightening, and I think we've actually had every decade so far, 30, 40, 50, 60, so that's really interesting as well. And today, I've known Amber for a long time. Hey, Amber, thanks for hey. showing up. And so... <laughs> What about that post when you read that post and you're like, yeah, I want, I got things to say. <laughs> what, what came to mind first? Yeah. Like I wish I had reread it right before we got started. So I was super oriented, but you know, I think that like the big thing for me is my, what I've experienced a lot of are a lot of false starts. Mm. I've had decent boyfriends but a lot of false starts. So stuck in the single phase, um, meeting like guy after guy after guy and, um, got to a point where I was like, I'm so done because I'm, I can't stand this man. He has unlimited faces and names and I'm so tired of meeting him. Like I took a couple years off and didn't even think about it. Nothing. Um, and I think that, I think that helped me out, but, um, what is it I want to say to men in particular, I'd say in my process, if, if something's not working out, like, do you have, do you have to like ghost out? Do you have to fade away. Are you so afraid of our fucking emotions or how we're going to respond that you got to coward out and not just address the situation? Because I think, you know, maybe I can't speak for all women, but I'm, I'm going to guess most of us can handle it. Yeah, being safe, no thanks, yeah. this is working for me, I'm moving yeah. on. Whatever. Yeah, or or how about the guy who, you know, there's nice chemistry and all of a sudden, you know, he, he says, hey, I just want to let you know, not looking for a relationship, no strings. And like, if anything proceeds from here, I just want to let you know where I stand. And I'm like, the guy who informs, I appreciate. Yeah. I really appreciate. Um, now, did he say that before you had sex? Or after oh, oh no 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 there's there's some like before who just right. let you know up front Love and it. it's and and for me it's like thank you because you know what women are sexual beings too and yeah. we are very capable of making a decision what i can't stand is not knowing what i'm choosing into yeah of course right yeah presenting one thing and doing another mm. you know and the whole notion that women are so simple yeah, I guess, but they'd be a lot more simple for us if they just communicated. Right. Yeah. Okay. And we, so along this show, first of all, every single woman is saying the same thing. So this is a theme. Like, it's like, can you just show up and say what it is you want and need so I can make an informed decision? Seems pretty simple. Seems pretty simple. Yeah. Right. Um, and I don't, so I don't know if everybody's managing everybody else's feelings here or like you said i mean that was a pretty big word being cowardly yeah it kind of kind of looks that way um men like to avoid conflict with women i do know that men do not like conflict with women and they're raised to not be in conflict with women a lot of the time so there's that it doesn't make them a coward i don't know but i'm hearing you on this well, it's kind of like, I don't know, chasing your tail in a way because you want to avoid conflict with us, yet your avoidance of just saying what is true Great. causes <laughs> us to go through all kinds of challenges and then we become the woman you don't want to deal with. <laughs> there you go. We become her. Like, because you're like, okay, what's going on? Are, are we here? Are we there? And it's like, oh, you know, um, so if you really want to avoid conflict, Be the easiest way to do that is to man up and just say what's true. And what I mean about that is what your intentions are. If you've lost interest and you've decided you're going to move on, just say so. I've had those two. Those moments suck, but 
but then they're over. There's no wondering. There's no, you know, and it's like leaving us with big question marks all the time. I, I don't think it's helping them avoid conflict. Well, and it lets, so here's something that just occurred to me. So brothers, men listening to me, how you leave a woman sets her up for your brother, your fellow man. Because every time women have this experience with a man, guess what? Yeah, they bring it into the next experience because after data says 70, 80, 100 men have done this, women start going, huh, men don't tell the truth. Now, of course, that's not fair and it's not true because I've met plenty of great men. And yet, how can we avoid causing unnecessary drama, trauma, conflict, pain, all of us, women and men, all of us need to do this. Like, just be honest, just Mm -hmm. like your intent. So, all right, you were on the dating scene. It was kind of tragic, dated a couple of people okay, because you started off with this kind of like be somebody who, you know, what, so what's well, going on? What are you well, looking I, for? What, I are you looking like, for? Like, what am I looking for? Yeah, what are you in dating? What are you looking for? Well, I'm, I'm kind of in a new situation that's forming right now. And I have been starting to like write down where um, I listened to this really good Brene Brown talk, I think is somewhat recent, where she was talking about you know, connection with another person. Like we would seek that connection. She said, but you should never have more connection with another person than you have with yourself. Yeah. So that just kind of landed with me like, okay, well, what is it that I want? And it's like, well, I feel like I know, but sometimes when I go to articulate it, it really doesn't come out clear. Hmm. So I started just kind of like writing about it. And, and actually it's, you know, I don't know. I had those notes around here earlier. Um, you know, a, a lot of it was about, was about uh, different ways of communicating safety, emotional safety, physical safety. Um, it was about actually really wanting a reprieve from like, okay, we have chemistry. Maybe there's a little bit of kissing or something that happens. And why does he think that's a green light to just go straight for it? Like, oh, where, yeah. where's the guy who, remember in the beginning when you get to like, just make out? And it was yeah. cool and that was all it was and it was fun and you could do that for a little while and then it could progress a little bit slowly and um i feel like men just they they're so fixated on on opening with sex that it it's like i feel like i constantly have to defend my boundaries like why isn't a verbal boundary enough if i tell you what works for me or doesn't work for me why am i later having to stop you from trying to move it farther forward um so i realized that clear what does it sound like give me pretend we're dating give me a verbal boundary i want to i want to hear this because i think it's been interesting because i've been calling women out on like the word connection present explain Mm -hmm. it let's hear what it sounds like ultimately that um i want time to connect uh physically where it's non-sexual for a time where the touch is about safety and and when I say connection, I mean that it's not it's not rushing my timing. Okay. So let me let me let me break that down then as a man. So what I heard was, because I can think man. Yeah. But what I heard was you need time for safety to develop. So non-sexual touching and there needs to be some time. All right. I remember telling a guy I needed him to um, touch me longer than he was touching. And so he touched me, instead of touching me for a minute, he touched me for a minute and 15 seconds. <laughs> now, as a woman, you understand when I said time or more that I was probably doubling that at least. But as a man, he did follow my direction. So once again, I would ask you, like, what does that actually mean when I want more time for safe i don't even know what safe touch actually really means either if i'm honest like it's it's a thing maybe i could think about what it means but like what are you really saying like break it down in like a step-by-step format of what it looks like i'm impressing myself that i can get it to four words (laughs) wait for my timing ah very nice okay and what does that look like
Well, it looks it it looks like not pushing not pushing for sex if I haven't indicated that I want more. Okay. And what is indicating? What does it look like when you indicate you want more? Okay, so we've kissed. Yeah. What, what cues? What cues do I you're kissing, you're liking it, you're maybe moaning. Doesn't that mean go No, forward? that means nothing. That you should absolutely interpret nothing from that. Because the fact that I'm enjoying you doesn't mean I want more than that. Right. But how, you know, so how do I know when you do? Well, you know, you could just ask. No. Oh, what? That's one thing. You could just ask, you know, how do you feel about things moving forward? Uh, not, not yet. Okay. And, and I don't want to have to have a big explanation. I really just want to be like, not yet. And I think the hardest part for me in communicating it is like, it feels like these, these two things in conflict because I want this to happen. I just don't want it that fast right now. Yeah. You know, and that's a I turn guess, off, right? Cause then you have to be the gate gear. Like you're what you said in the beginning was I always have to be a gatekeeper. I'm always a no. I always have this feeling, which is a turn off to us. Not so great for them either. Cause it constantly puts us in a rejection of their advance mode, which is right. It's not rejecting fun. somebody. I actually want to come closer. Yes. So try to maybe penetrate my heart or my mind first. Hmm. Hmm. What does that look like? Well, creating, creating um, more of the intimacy that comes in a more of a friendship package as a, <gasps> as a foundation. Amber, you're blowing our minds here. Do you know that men are told no friendship, no friendship. Once you're in the friendship zone, you're screwed. But you just said a friendship. If you don't build a friendship with the person that you are seeking intimacy with, you really don't have anything. When all the chemistry goes away, what's left? Okay. So well, friendship is okay. Wait, so when I say okay. friendship, I don't mean, you know, um, you're only a friend. I, it means friendship is the backbone of the relationship okay. and it's worth the time. So finding out about each other, how, how you grew up, what kind of, you know, things that you believe. What do you think? What are your thoughts? What are your feelings? Um, what are your challenges? Just the, the whole getting to know another person on the inside, not just, you know, what's your favorite color and who's what sports do you like or like those kinds of surface level things, but who the person is. And I think as well, too, it's like it does take being able to receive another person without without judging or ridiculing or minimizing, or you shouldn't feel that way. Or, you know, it's like, that. that's another thing that I've noticed. I go, go to share feelings, they get like minimized. Um, and hmm. so, sometimes kind of ridiculed or laughed off or, you know, and that, that comes out of my family of origin too. Okay. Kind of and then there's another thing, you know, men are being told they're supposed to lead the woman on the adventure of her life and be super masculine. And the way you do that is you don't ask do you don't say something like, I'd love to kiss you or I'd love to touch your breast or you're ready to move forward. Never do that if you're a real man. But here you are kind of blowing that up too. Kinda, because there's there's a way that works and a way that doesn't. Like if I have if I'm getting asked, can I touch this? Can I do this? Can this for every little move? Like, uh, yeah, that that wouldn't work. So it's too far the other direction. But it's just generally speaking, I mean, you could be you know, you can be kissing things and heat up a little bit and you can check in or even before that, you can find out what their intention is or what they look like. Yeah. So it could be a question like, you know, if I lead with my feelings, like I'd really love to kiss you and you're like, hmm, yeah. And you lean in. That's a yes. And that wasn't, can I kiss you? That was, I'd really love to kiss you. And then waiting for mm -hmm. the cues mm -hmm. that she's giving you. Right. So something yes. more like more like that. Um, Today is an age of consent. Consent's pretty big out there in the world, too. So I don't think you people are worried about ruining the mood by having conversations. But yet. And if I were a man dating in the world, man, I'd be having a lot of conversations. I would not ever want to be considered somebody who is crossing boundaries. Yeah. And I think that that's the lost art is conversation beforehand like 
why are we moving forward without talking about it, even knowing where, where each of us stands? And I think that seems to be the typical way, you know. So is that a hookup or hookup culture? What's going on? But yeah, I think so. From, from men who say they want to be in relationships. Wait, what do you mean? Well, a lot of profiles. When Did you find men being pretty accurate, like on dating or their what their intent is compared to what they really want to do? I found them not not quick to share their intent, to mm. have to really try to pull it out of them. Or I'd kind of watch and like notice and, and pay attention to certain things, but I'd never, sometimes I'd know, sometimes I wouldn't. Um, like the last one invited me into a relationship and then became avoidant. I was like, what? Mm. Yeah. So his intention was relationship, but I walked away from it like after a couple of weeks I'm like okay so am I in a relationship because I kind of thought relating was part of it and there's just not <laughs> we're not connecting to have that happen we're around groups he's got a friend living with him there's all this you know yeah and so yeah. Are you mainly meeting online or are you meeting in person how how um no I'm not I'm not meeting online I have done online dating in the past um but I haven't gotten to a place right now where I'm like you know, in some serious seeking mode. I, I'm, in fact, the last one was a little disruptive to my plan. My, my sons are now 21 and I want to go do me for the first time. Yeah. I'm 44, but I've been my parents' daughter and my son's mother my whole life. Got it. So yeah. I'm selling my place, buying an RV and going to go figure out what I so yeah. to me, that wasn't really a time to be on an online dating thing unless I wanted something casual and frivolous. And frankly, I'm very bored with that. Yeah. So let's let's speak on that a moment. Most women that I talk to want to have sex. They like sex. And yet, <laughs> why why are we not why are we not hooking up? You said bored. <laughs> like, bored. Well. Anyone new is a gamble because there's all this getting to know the person process or figure out uh, if whatever their intention was, if they stated at the beginning, are they actually that person? Like it takes time to figure all that out. And so like, I don't know, it's like there's a lot of um, a lack of clarity with a new person. And then the other thing that I find is like rarely is, is a hookup situation ever attuned to my body or what I'm experiencing, it's usually all about him. Yeah. So what's the point? Right, right. Easier to do it ourselves. Yeah, like, and, and I have thought that it's like, well, I'm, I never fail to take care of myself, but I could go be with somebody. And then I, you know, there are certain risk factors involved in all of that emotionally, um, health wise, otherwise, you know, and it's like, why would I take that on when like, I could do a better job in less time and yeah. No grooming. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, ex exactly. So, you know, men have been told that orgasm is the uh, end holy grail of, of sex, that that's all we want. But I hear that from women all the time, that that is not actually the case that makes sex good or not. I mean, if you've never had an orgasm and you can never orgasm with somebody else, then it might seem like the holy grail. But what are your thoughts yeah. on that? Um, well, I, I don't, th I don't think it's all of it, but I, I do think it, it has an important place, you know, like if there's a, with somebody and they're reaching their orgasm and I'm not, and like, how many times have we done this? Then, then it's a, then it's an issue. It's like, okay. Like, um, cause that tells me he's not even, he's not attuned to me. He's not, not really, the tension isn't on me um okay yeah so if it's if it's an afterthought for him or a not even a consideration for him then that's yeah. that's not cool no it's not um but it's not the end all be all meaning I, there, there can be a lot of um a lot of connection a lot of pleasure a lot of goodness that can come out of um sexual activity that doesn't result in an orgasm right and what about and and great sex can happen without penetration as well Top, like making out yeah because like making out 
and and he doesn't drop some comment about blue balls to try to guilt you into doing more. Oh my God, people are they still saying that? It's not not as common. Oh my God, they, they don't even really. It's like, come on, come on. It's like it, it it it's almost like this thing that that we all know. So like, oh, once you work up to a certain point, like now what? I'm committed to this. But unless we've talked about it ahead of time, I I don't think I am. Yeah, well, you're not committed before, during, even if you said yes, you can say no. Even if he's inside you, three strokes, you can say we're done. Yeah, there is no such thing as have to follow through mm -hmm. for a man or a woman. As a man, just because you're wrecked, she wants to have sex, doesn't mean you have to have sex. Right, uh, and it, it would be nice if there was zero pressure about it. Right. Okay, so you what you're saying is you felt pressured by these. Oh, kind of yeah, and my thing's kind of like, look, you're a man. You know how your body works. If it's an issue, don't you know how to take care of it? Like, you go borrow the bathroom for a little while or something if you want. Like, why is that? Why is that being put on me? Yeah, and I haven't had that much recently, but it, it's it's happened enough times. No. Yeah, I. Yeah, it definitely happened to me like a lot in my earlier years was always that subtle, like, oh, come on, baby. Like, you know, like when I've clearly stated this is as far as we're going, you know, but then again, I also you know, kind of like look at society and movies and everything And all movies tell men that they shouldn't take no, they shouldn't, they should always push forward, that we really want them to push forward to feel like we're desirable and all that. So there's a lot of confusing messages out there. But oh, yeah. What you're saying is if, if an individual woman is clear with you in the moment, I freaking believe that. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't, it's like this commonality towards boundary pushing. It's, it's, I'll tell you what, it doesn't make me feel honored or respected, hmm. but really honored is the word because the person that I'm, I'm talking to now is very capable of being incredibly honorable and has demonstrated that already in other ways and it's like that was the word that came to me it's like when you don't push my boundary when i say no i'm not ready for that and it never comes up the, the rest of that night i mean something could change maybe after that i find myself more ready but like then i feel i feel like like i'm being honored like you're not you know and i think some of it for me too really comes down to I want to know that you're interested in who I am. And part of that comes from being an attractive female. I've had a lot of guys who are like, hey, that's hot. I think I'd like to hit it. And I'm not an object, yeah. you know? So when a guy goes straight, straight for it and isn't spending his time really connecting with who I am, he's not getting anywhere on the inside of me. If he wants a relationship, he's not going to get very far. Yeah. If he gets sex, it's, it's, that's not going to last. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a theme that's running across all women of all the different decades. And, and, and I will tell you guys, you guys can't see the women that I've asked, but it really interestingly enough, almost all of them are like, I would say way above average, above average attractive <laughs> level. So I think that's interesting too. Um, mm -hmm. but, I, but I purposely didn't want, you know, us seeing anybody for this. Uh, yeah, it's a podcast anyway, but so the theme here is like, they're, you know, the honor part, like don't be pushing boundaries thinking that that makes us feel more desirable because that doesn't, unless a woman's really insecure and she like, if she's 20, you know, like below 25, she might be into that. But yeah, most women are not into having to guard themselves. Cause if oh, you want yeah. to feel good, how do we feel good and guard ourselves at the same time? Yeah, that's the thing. It creates anxiety the a kind of tension that's not the kind not the kind you want <laughs> <laughs> right right so build up the tension i would say build the tension and then lean back a little as a man if you build tension and lean back a little you'll find out if she's moving towards you and that's that's a good way to find out if it's working mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. so okay so get to know you and we're, we're not talking about we're, we're not talking about hookups here we're talking about men that are saying they want to be in relationship because man if you're just looking to hook up literally just be 100 percent clear looking to hook up we know that the statistics are you know 15 percent of the time you're going to get that need met 
uh, that hookup need if you're straight up across the board I want to have sex this is all I want anybody want to have sex with me then yeah show those pictures that make us want to have sex with you that's not your dick with a beer can with a bunch of dirty laundry behind you just so we're clear on that that's the worst thing to do um, but if you if you're saying no, you want no a dick pic at all no dick pic at all if you're attempting a relationship like just yeah. just wholly omit that yeah yeah, just say no to the dick pic, no to your kind of suggestive in the towel in the bathroom pic before we even know who you are. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all we can say. You have a, yeah, hey, nice body, but probably we're looking at like your bathroom cleanliness or the things behind you that are telling us more about you than your abs. Yeah, right, because we're trying to take in who you are. You yeah, know? right. A good so, looking guy is just a good looking guy. Right, if it's a good looking guy standing in front of a scuzzy bathroom, uh, yuck. <laughs> yeah. uh, I did want at one point, Amber, I was starting to start, going to start a company that will shoot, will, it's something about we'll shoot your dick pics. And it was, um, guys come in and we actually pose them in front of Ferraris and really nice houses and shit like that. You know, make the dick, because it's really not about your dick, because most women don't care about your dick that much. Yes. You may have a beautiful one. We may even think it's beautiful, but it doesn't mean that's the thing that's going to attract us, the majority mm. of women. But what's behind you? Now, that's a different story. Lay your dick yeah. on a Ferrari. Here's my dick yeah. on a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> well, but that, and that's also hookup culture, right? Like, as yeah. a woman, I don't care if you have a Ferrari, if I'm interested in you. But if I'm just, if this is just sex, do I want to have sex on your Ferrari? Yeah, sure. All right. Sex on your Ferrari is fun. <laughs> <laughs> you see the look on Amber's face here. <laughs> yeah, I think also too, um, by, you know, disclosing up front, if all you're looking for is just to, just to hook up, it's like, thank you for letting me know what I'm choosing into. Oh, and we're very capable of saying yes to that. Yeah. If that's a match. Yeah. If that's a match. And if it's not a match, that means we have more of an interest than that. So if we are persuaded in that direction, it doesn't go well for us because you're not interested in more and we're thinking or hoping you are. Right. And that's a really crummy position to be in as a woman. Right. And as a man, because men get, that happens to men as well. That sucks for them as well. And I think if we all understood that if we could leave everybody we found better than we found them, it would help all of us, all of us. Oh. Because, you know, I have men say, why are women so angry and so jaded and blah, blah, blah. Well, dude, your brothers, hello, they're doing shit that isn't cool. And if you're one of those guys that is listening to this and you're cringing and you are got your hand over your face and you're like, oh, my God, because you've done this, the good news is you can stop. The good news is you can just stop now and do something different leave everybody in a better place. But okay, so what do you want to leave men with that does work? What what kind of, how do you want to inspire a man to, to really kind of get more what he wants and help you get what you want? What would you say? I feel like it's just opening up more in conversation um, because if a guy leads with what, you know, he's looking for that he's ultimately looking for a relationship, it's like, okay, well, what are your values? What is it? You know, let's like, let's explore those things. Um, I wish I had my notes in front of me that I was taken for myself recently because it's so much clearer when it, when it was right here. Um, my brain's jumping track for a second. Um, just to, yeah, to state, to, to let us know and then find out, find out about us, what works and share about yourself. It doesn't have to all be on them. You know, it's got to come, you know, from the woman as well, too. Yeah. But, you know, if both people are, are aiming towards relationship, I mean, there's still a process to get there, but at least, you know, you're headed in the same direction. And I think clearing that up in the beginning is good. Um, and, you know, finding out about their, their life journey. What was what was it like growing up in, in the world, you know? Have they done work on themselves? Like, what what's happened in their life? Like, what matters to them because the more we just come up with additional questions to keep asking and the dig deeper we dig into the other what happens is not only do you find out if this person is somebody worth 
pursuing. But if you spend that time getting to know a woman like that, and you have a little restraint and you're not pouncing on her like all the other guys are, it has an attraction effect. Mm -hmm. I did that once. I had a friend of mine. He was like, you want to go mess around like no strings? And I was like, yeah, like uh, there's a part of me who wants to say yes. But nah, I don't, don't really think so. And he's like, well, how about this? You come over and there's no expectations or whatever. I was like, OK, I'll hold you to your word. And that's exactly what happened. We just cuddled up and crashed out for the night. And then I came over and did it again and, and again. And after a few times, it was like, actually, you know. <laughs> so, right. He gave you, just he gave you space. So that's yes. what I'm hearing a lot, too, is that for women, men feel like they're told they need to seal the deal. They need to make sure you know you're attractive or that they're interested. But I think they're do, they're going about it in a way that's, not creating that uh, good tension and creating, um, yeah, allowing the space to to explore in that. So I would say space, dudes. You can use your voice. Like, would it be okay if a man was attracted to you that he told you he was attracted to you and he'd, you know, he'd really love to kiss you, but he wasn't going to do it until next time? <laughs> <laughs> I might be thrown for a loop. I'd be like, wait, really? Yeah. Why do you want to wait? <laughs> like, yeah, right. <laughs> Now I'm kind of curious. Yeah, exactly. So what that was is that was leaning in with your intentions while not pushing energetically or physically. And uh, that actually does work uh, with women because you're standing out as being different and it shows that you do have some restraint. And uh, restraint isn't a bad, I mean, we get that. Yeah. Oh my God, I just have to have you now. Mm, okay, you can use your words for that, but don't don't use your tongue and your body for that right away. But okay, so Amber. Well, I was, let me, if I can yeah. really quick, I was gonna say the, um, the place that I think the pursuit energy is well invested is in consistent communication, whether it's shooting a text that's saying good morning, so we know you're thinking about us, whether it's that, I think where it's, where it's reaching out and making contact, I personally find that that kind of pursuit draws me in as long as you're not blowing up my phone call me five times a day do you know what i mean like it's so when i get that because the, the more space that goes by in the beginning without communication at all then i start to go hmm and i start to kind of wonder in the space in between so the the pursuit energy that works for me is is coming towards in reaching out how's your day going want to get together on saturday things like that yeah okay you know? So yeah, not aggressive, throw you against the wall kind of stuff, unless you're established that that's something everybody wants. And that's usually a little bit later down the road, regardless of what Hollywood movies are telling you and things like that. Well, right. I really appreciate you showing up today, Amber, and being open with the guys out there and uh, letting it hang out and kind of like, because you know what? I love the men on that show up for this show because they're showing up for this show because they want to understand. And when I, when they reach out to me, you know, for coaching calls and things like that, they're usually saying things like, Oh my God, I'm learning so much. I can't yeah. believe all this stuff that I thought I knew that was wrong, that society or somebody's telling me now I see where I'm going wrong. There's always a chance to pivot and change and start doing something different. And that's mm -hmm. what I hope that this series with you listening to women that have the same type of theme going on here, um, will really, really, kind of land home so thanks again we'll see everybody on the next episode i think i have a couple more women and man by that point we will definitely know a theme <laughs> about what you should and should not be doing so we'll see you on the next episode <laughs>